We're talking about AC condensate harvesting. So an average size home air conditioner will produce an average of 20 gallons plus or minus of condensate per day, uh, depending on how long the unit runs and the humidity level in the ambient air. Uh, human climate zones obviously will produce more AC condensate than drier climate zones. Uh, one word of caution, older air conditioning units may have evaporative coils that were soldered together with lead-based solder. There are lead test strip kits you can buy to test the, the solder joints on your coils. Uh, there's even some that are designed to test water. So the condensate drain water that's coming out of your your, your air conditioning unit, you can test that uh, condensate water to see if it contains lead or not if you're concerned about that. Some key notes, uh, a general rule of thumb is that 0.1 to 0.3 gallons of condensate is produced every hour. Uh, condensate drain water can be used for potable purposes after proper treatment. Uh, condensate drain water is similar to distilled water. Uh, Suspended solids are low. Uh, the pH is neutral to so slightly acidic. So again, you know, proper treatment if it's going to be used for, you know, drinking purposes. Uh, it is also obviously important then to keep the air conditioning equipment clean, free of debris, bacteria, dust, dirt, etc. Um, and that includes the not just the evaporative coils, but the, the drip pans underneath the evaporative coil should be kept clean and the drain line should be kept clean. Uh, some municipalities even have ordinances now requiring new construction uh, to harvest AC condensate. Uh, example would be the city of San Antonio in Texas. Um, newly constructed commercial buildings uh, installing air conditioning systems uh, after January 1st, uh, 2006 shall have a single and independent condensate line to collect condensate for future utilization. So some calculations for folks that like to see some numbers. So a real world example would be the HEB Grocery uh, Distribution Center. And this information was from 2003. Uh, they collected the condensate from air handlers and refrigeration systems throughout their facility. Uh, their annual water savings was uh, over 6 million gallons of water, and the financial savings per year was 20, 000, uh, over $20,000. And the simple payback period was just shy of one year at 11 months. So that video clip right here is water that was collected from AC condensate uh, from the drain line on my own personal property. And we used it to water the grass here in our backyard. And inside that buried five gallon bucket, it's just simply a five gallon bucket buried below grade. There is a little sump pump uh, controlled by a float switch that you see there. On top you have a vent and a T and uh, that's where the water comes into the bucket. When the bucket fills up, the float floats up, turns the pump on. Uh, that's your junction box. And then that, that threaded fitting right there would be where you would attach your, your sprinkler head or your piping to go to you know, a, a storage tank or whatnot. And this is a little bit better view of that system that I designed and installed. So this actually solved two problems. Number one, it reduced our water bill and allowed us to water the grass during hot dry periods. Um, but when the air conditioning was running, we would end up with this big puddle of water there in our backyard. By installing this system, that eliminated that puddle of water. Um, so you can see it's a very simple system. You have an AC unit. You can connect your condensate drain line uh, to a, a below-grade collection vessel. Uh, that vessel needs to have a vent. 
Um, and then the effluent either goes, you know, to your irrigation system, you know, you water your grass, or that pump can pump it through some piping to a storage tank if you want to collect it for other purposes. And it just plugs into a 120 volt GFCI receptacle. And again, everything's weatherproof and has uh, strain reliefs that are weatherproof. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave me a comment for future video topics you would like me to cover.